Hey, what's up? Steve Noble, Noble Moto here. Um, just uh, up here at Skidmark Garage, going to do the uh, exhaust install on the uh, 2012 Sportster, putting the Super Trap 2 into 1 Super Mag on it. Um, since we're up here at Skidmark, got a little background noise. Uh, it'll be okay. Uh, I'll try to talk over it and uh, keep going as we go along here. Um, first steps uh, already went around, but loosen a couple of the bolts. Um, we're going to break everything free here at the flanges first. Those are always our hardest points to get to. And we're going to go underneath and undo our clamp mounts, our, our mounts here on the bottom of the mufflers to actually hold the mufflers in place. Uh, once we get those free, undo the uh, muffler clamps. And uh, we should be able to actually then undo the clamps up here and uh, should actually be able to pull the head pipes off individually, separate them from the equalizer tube, and then pull them off the bike. Uh, it's a lot easier than it was when I just explained it right there. Uh, so, yeah, let's get right to it here. All right, here we are. We got to disconnect the uh, O2 sensors. I already pulled this clip off here that holds the wiring harness and the clutch cable of the frame. Uh, the O2 quick connect sensor is right here. I'm going to just lift that up a little bit and push, and it separates just like so. Unsnake the wire out through here, and that will leave us loose all the way through there. So when we pull the head pipe off, the wire will come with it. Rear head pipe wiring, or rear O2 sensor wiring, right here under this little plastic cover. Should be able to pull it forward. There's the plug. I'm gonna flip it up with my fingertip there and slide it out. Unsnake the wiring right here. Now give us a free shot to the back side of the O2 sensor right there. Once again, when I pull the head pipe off, the wiring will come right along with it. All right, here we are. Got the uh, sun time lapse, got the exhaust off. Uh, now we have to get the crossover tube and muffler bracket off. In order to do that, we're going to have to pull the cover here off the front pulley. Uh, it's held on by a few Allen bolts here. Then once we get that off, we'll be able to pull the Allen bolts off that hold the crossover tube and muffler bracket off. So we'll get right to that. All right, here's a point I forgot to mention. So our muffler bracket here actually goes all the way around the brake rod lever here. So we're gonna take a small Allen bolt and undo this rear heim joint, uh, the right size, undo this rear heim joint here. That way we can separate the brake linkage from the actual master cylinder and then separate the whole brake assembly from the, uh, the muffler mount assembly from being looped through the brake assembly. It's always something. All right, got the uh, little heim joint unbolted here from the brake brake lever. Uh, this does have a little blue Loctite on there, so before I put it back together, I'm gonna have to add another little dab of blue Loctite on there to seal everything up. But once that's you know slid up and out of the way, now I can actually pull the muffler bracket off here. Won't be needing this anymore. Uh, now while you're in here, it's a good time to check out, see how your pulleys are wearing, how's your belt doing. You know, 45 degree twist there with the fingertips. Everything's looking good. Uh, check out your oil lines, check out your hind joints on your brake levers. Give it a good old once over while you're in there. Can't hurt, better to find a problem now than on the side of the road. Alright, next step is to pull the O2 sensors out of the bung on the back of the head pipe. Uh, this requires a 7 8 wrench, at least on the uh, 2012 18 millimeter uh, O2 sensors. You want to be careful with these wires, they're rather delicate. Uh, you kink them or bend them around too much and it will damage the O2 sensor and then you'll have to replace it. Uh, so we're just going to balance the uh, pipe on the bottom on something solid down here, which I have four by four down there, and just break it free. Carefully thread this back out. Turn that there where where you can see it. We'll do this camera thing. There's your O2 sensor. Care to uh, take a look there at it? I don't know if it'll focus on it. Uh, just got a series of little slits in there. Uh, I don't know camera won't really focus. It's got a little series of slits in there, picks up the exhaust gases and calculates out 
um, calculates out you know your air to fuel ratio on there. So we're gonna keep that separate, as in it being the rear head pipe. Next, we're gonna do the front O2, the O2 sensor off the front head pipe. Break that free. Should thread right out of there. When we put the back, the when we put these back on. Going to be careful to uh, we're going to put some never seize on the threads to keep them seizing up. We're also going to be careful not to get any gunk or anything inside the O2 sensor in there. Uh, the never seize could burn off and damage the sensor. All right, here we are. Uh, next step is remove the snap rings here. These snap rings actually hold the flange in place, and that's what actually holds your uh, head pipe up to your motor. So you can either use snap ring pliers or good old flathead screwdriver. We usually do the trick. Sometimes you can get lucky and just use your fingers. Get the snap ring behind the screwdriver there, the screwdriver behind the snap ring, and ta-da. Keep track of that. For every other pipe here. Put the flange on down. Uh, this snap, well, I'll show you how to pull it off just for good measure, but the snap ring is actually damaged from the factory. They uh, did not put it on straight, so we'll pry this sucker off here anyways. Just so I can show you what a damaged one looks like. That one came off entirely too easy. Little pipe down. Now you can see this one wasn't see it in place. Uh, it's awfully warped there. You can see a little bit better there. So this one was dished in. When they put the uh, flange back up on there from the factory, must have been a fucking Friday, and uh, they put the uh, flange back up on there and the snap ring wasn't set inside the cylinder head. Therefore, when they tightened it down, it actually kind of flared out a little bit. Might even have a fan exhaust leak. Huh. Well, this is trash. At this point, we've got everything off the bike. Sensors are out, snap rings are out, gaskets are out. So I want to go into the next very important step of this entire process. And that was an excellent time for a beer. Cheers. Uh, we'll return after these messages. All right, here we go with the uh, front head pipe port. Uh, we have the old uh, exhaust manifold gaskets in here. Have a little flathead screwdriver, dental pick, you know, needle nose pliers. These are really kind of a fiber base. So what you can really do is take the edge of the screwdriver, dig it down in there, and it should hook it out, hopefully in one large chunk. We are not so lucky with this one. So we're gonna have to dig it out there a little bit. Then again, they were a pair of needle nose pliers and pulled the rest of the way out. All right, here we are at the exhaust port again. We're actually gonna try to reshoot this a second time with better lighting. Uh, right here is where I started to take the initial exhaust gasket out, but you couldn't see it. Uh, you can see up inside the exhaust port there. You can see the exhaust valve up in there. Um, so we're gonna take this little hook tool here. And we're gonna dig it in back here behind this gasket, like so and pull forward. With a little luck, we'll hook the whole gasket and it'll come out of there as one piece. Today is not our lucky day. Sometimes they spider web out. There we go. There's the old gasket right there. Throw that in trash. Uh, then we're gonna go back to the back head pipe, do the same thing again. Give another look at it. Our back exhaust port. Same thing again, we're gonna hook in here behind it. See, so can't get a little more luck here. Whoop. There you go, pull the whole thing out of there. Just like so, just like that. And it's kind of a, you don't ever wanna reuse these things. You always wanna use new. And we will uh, discard that sucker right there. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, got our new exhaust gaskets right here. Uh, Pick these up from the local parts shop. Uh, everything's cleaned out up in there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just going to see if I can do this and show you what's going on. Just going to ever so carefully 
squared up, it should slide right back in there. Just a little bit of fingertip pressure. If it takes anything more than that, you got problems. Uh, these things are rather delicate because they're like a fiber mesh, so it's easy to distort them. Uh, if you get one that's a little tight, does it hurt to put a little bead of grease around the outside of it? Let me grab the new one here. Does it ever hurt to put a little bead of grease around the outside of this just to get the slide in a little easier? But so far, so good with these. Let's see if we're going to get lucky here on the rear head port. Just slide them in there with your fingertips ever so carefully. Make sure they're seated all the way in the port. And your exhaust ports are good to go. All right, here we are. We're back. Uh, next step in the process, we've got the exhaust gaskets in there. I'm uh, going to put the uh, mounting bracket for the muffler body and the head pipe mounts. I'm going to put this around here. Uh, i got a nice solid powder coated bracket here. Uh, stamped everything, formed. Shouldn't take any modifications or anything. Should bolt right up on here. Should line right up here the existing mounts and uh, should bolt right in. I'll tilt the camera down there so we little bit to see if you can't see what's going on. So hopefully you can see that there. Should line right up to the holes right there already inside the transmission there. That one's stirring in. This other one's stirring in here. And uh, from there, we will uh, tighten that up and uh, should be good to go. All right, I uh, already got the uh, exhaust flanges on here. Um, next, we're going to pop the uh, snap, ring, snap ring right over here. We use snap rings, uh, snap ring pliers to spread these over. Slide them over the top. Sometimes you can just get lucky and uh, take your fingers there. Maybe with a little luck, they'll slide on over. Ta-da! Didn't even draw blood. How about that? You want to make sure when you slide the flange up that they do sit down inside the flange there and not sticking out anywhere. That was the problem we had with the old one. They put it together, someone didn't pay attention, and the flange was sitting on there on a cocked angle like that versus sitting flat up against it like so. All right, next step, putting the head pipe on. Now, I've encountered a lot of people that you know, struggle with this or swear up and down, the 2 in one head pipe will not go on there. I'm here to tell you, it will pop right on there. Slide your flanges back down away from the setup here. Have at least one or two nuts ready to put up on there. The key is there's a faint little cutout right here in the air cleaner fin or in the cooling fins on the cylinder head. Hopefully you can see that. And take your head pipe here, slide the uh, flanges here, right up underneath there, and uh, it will go in there. Um, looks like I have to go around the brake lever, so slide it just up in there like that. Have some random people yell at you for no reason. Make sure you don't pinch your uh, O2 sensor wiring as you slide it on up in there. Slide the other side up in there. Check your O2 sensor. It should snap right into place just like that. You slide your uh, exhaust flanges up here into place. Slide them up on the stud. Now do an up close video on the front one. Start a nut on here to help hold the flange in place. And ta-da, there it is. All right, here we are. We're on the uh, front head pipe. As you can see, the flange is sitting up in there, almost all the way into place. We'll pop it in place there. Whoop. Slide the snap ring up there. Slide the exhaust flange up on there, like so. Get it lined up to where the um, back up. Uh, i got to switch hands here. Slide that up on there like so. Sorry for the shaky camera video. Slide that up on there. Usually you can see inside there and see if the snap ring is in place. Looks like it is. See the snap ring in place there. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna have to put the camera down here. But since the uh, bottom stud here is a little easier to get to, we're gonna thread the nut on there. And then uh, push the top on and thread that nut into place, and uh, we'll be ready to tighten it all down. 
All right, we're back. Got the uh, exhaust flanges on there, and everything's tightened up in place. Um, next, we're going to put the disc system on. Uh, the way this works is you have a uh, gap here in between each disc, and it's measured out by the little step here. Let me take one of the discs off so you can see. So there's a gap here on each disc, and you have this little step here on the bolt. A lot going on up here. The skid mark's a little loud. So you've got the step up here, and that actually allows for a certain amount of air gap through here. That way the uh, exhaust gas can go out. You can change your disc accordingly, and it will uh, adjust how uh, how much back pressure you have and how much noise you have. Um, so okay. we're going to stack all these together okay. here. Put a, little put a little never seize on each one. On each one. And uh, that way we'll be able to uh, you know get the thing out and make adjustments down the road. So we will uh, put a little never seize here on each screw. Nice. We'll go to the next one here. I'm going to slide this through here. Let's get this to feed through here. A lot of discs. I think we're putting either, uh, I think we're putting a full stack here. I think there's 20 discs on this setup. There's probably a little more flow than it needs, but you know, whatever. It'll make a little more noise. It's nice to have moderate exhaust, but some of them's a little more noise is fun. Right here. We've got the end of our muffler here. Got the little thread in inserts in there. So we're going to take the stack here, put it up on top, line it up there, and grab the Allen wrench dropped on the floor. We're going to at least start the first one down in here. I'll hold everything in place. Start the second one. Just got a little never seize each one. We'll go to the next screw. I will they have a never seize. Remember, a little never seize goes a long ways here. We'll uh, slide this down in here. Like so. Once we get them all down in here, we will uh, tighten them all up evenly, kind of a cross pattern, a lot like your uh, lug nuts on your car there. And uh, so on and so forth. All right, and we are back. Uh, got the end cap screwed on there. A lot of back and forth, cross torque planter, and of course, uh, just squeeze it down evenly, but you don't want to over tighten it and crush anything or strip any of the threads out of there. Uh, our muffler mounting bolts, our little T bolts here, slide in the slot there. Slide, have a little T bolts, slide in the slot there, like so. People are harassing me off screen. Anyways, we're going to slide this right here onto the end of the collector. I'm uh, going to make sure we park clamp on, Allen wrench screw out, slide it up onto the collector right there, slide the muffler body to the collector like so, ta-da, and we're going to rotate it around, line up both sides here, very self-explanatory, make sure it's all square. Now, as I'm putting all this together, I'm not tightening any one thing down. I'm just really just kind of loosely putting everything on there. That way, I can get everything in, lined up and in place, and then I'll go back and torque it down evenly, starting um, with the muffler, because that's what you see, so you want that to have lined up. 
all the way up to the head pipe. So, and then hold our uh, muffler body on here. Got a little background noise there, sorry about that. Hold our other nut on here. And we're going to uh, switch over time lapse. Uh, we'll tighten the mounts down, slide the clamp in place, tighten that down. Then I'll go through the torque, go back on the camera, and I'll torque everything down from back to front. All right, we're back. Um, going to give the, the muffler everything. We step back. Looks all nice and lined up. Just going to give each muffler mount ball to pull. Everything's tight. Sharp specifications. Got our clamp here. Uh, we're going to tighten this down. We'll probably end up coming back to it at some point. And uh, once it gets a few heat cycles in it, and give those a pull again, too, just to make sure everything's seated in place. We're going to uh, go up here to our exhaust flanges. Torque those down to manufacturer's specifications. Go around the front head pipe. Torque those also down to manufacturer's specifications. Get everything tightened down in place. Uh, we still have to put the heat shields on it yet, but to make sure everything's sealed up. We're going to fire it up. We'll see what it sounds like, and uh, we'll check for leaks on the thing. So here we go. All right, here we go. Fire it up, in neutral. Got everything on there, get everything torqued down. Last step, put the heat shields on. Got the hose clamps here. Uh, there's a little thread, a little slide out grooves right here. Um, gonna take the hose clamp, just slide her right on through there. Sometimes you have to bend the tip of it over. You have to hook up. I like to kind of set them up so the uh, the extra little tang is gonna point down uh, when you thread it on there. That way when you're standing there looking at the bike, obviously you, you, know, you, you don't see the extra little tang pointing down there. Let me back this one off here. Uh, open up the hose clamp all the way there. Drop socket wrench. Once again. Let's see if I can't get this thing to slide through here. And the tip of the hose clamp there a little bit so it slides around. Ta-da! All right, now we're going to take the hose clamps, bend them out a little bit like so. We've got a nice clearance there. Slide the sucker right up in place. Bend the hose clamps around from the back side there. Trying to burn herself on exhaust because we just had the bike running. And thread the uh, hose clamps on. <laughs> Good 
just like so. Now we're going to continue with the front, front head pipe. And we're going to do the collector. We'll put them all on there. Line everything up. Snug them all down evenly. Make sure you know the heat shields lamp nicely with the collector. And the collector overlays the clamp nicely. And uh, that'll be pretty much it. Uh, that's what we got. All right, we're back. Uh, got the uh, exhaust on, heat shields are on. Everything's looking pretty good. Start her up, see what it sounds like. We sound the computer microphone. Nice, good deep tone. Do it. There you have it. Two, Super Trap 2 into 1 Super Mag install. Uh, 2012 883 Sportster, like I said, disc-based system, makes good low-end power. Uh, it's pretty much the whole video there. Um, if you like it, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you hate it, let me know in the comments below. Uh, click subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in learning anything more about Noble Moto or Skidmark Garage, uh, you can check us out on Facebook and online. Um, I have my website, Noble Moto, that is K-N-O-B-L-E, moto.com. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Noble Moto and Instagram Noble underscore Moto uh, or just follow the links in the description below. And uh, there you have it. All right. Ride fast. Take chances.